sector area and arc lane. sector of a circle. Is a region bounded by two radii? Of the circle and their intercepted arc. So a picture of it would look really what a sector is, it's just a slice out of the it's a slice of pizza out of the whole pizza, isn't it? Or two slices or three slices. So if this is the center of the circle and this is point A and point B, then from the center to the edge of the circle is your radius. And then you've got an arc measure in degrees. <clears throat> and this shaded region is called sector ACB in this case. Um, this is sector. A, C, B. And the area of that sector is going to be equal to pi r squared times the degree measure of this arc divided by 360. This measure of this arc divided by 360 gives you what portion of the arc that piece represents, right? So what is this pi r squared? Does it look familiar? Area of the entire circle, right? So you're finding the area of the entire circle, and then you're multiplying it by whatever portion that arc is of the 360 degrees, okay? So it's really pretty simple, right? I mean, if you look at example, example 1A, here's the picture. This sector kind of looks like this, maybe a little bigger. It is MPN. And they ask you to find the area of each sector, give your answer. Oh, give your answer in terms of pi and round it to the nearest hundredth. This is 80 degrees. The radius is three. So the area Let's see. The area of this sector is going to be equal to pi times 3 squared times 80 over 360.
So you just do it in the calculator first and you leave the pi symbol there. So 80 divided by 360. 0.22 times 9. Or you can just do 3x squared times 80 fraction button 360 equals. And what is it equals? You got 2 pi? 2 pi. Yeah, and then just uh, the 2 is sitting in your calculator, so push times and the pi button equals. <coughs> Round it to the nearest hundredth, 6.28. So there's, it's the area of this region right here. That's not very difficult, is it? No. Pi r squared times the arc measure divided by 360. If the arc measure was given here, If the arc measure or if the central angle was given, right? Remember from before the break that the central angle measure is equal to the measure of its intercepted arc, right? So if you're given the central angle measure of 80 degrees, well, then this arc would be 80 degrees, right? Okay. 36, 16, 190. 90 divided by 360. Not much to it. So look at 811, page 811, segment of a circle. Is a region bound by an arc and its chord? A segment of a circle is a region Bounded by its arc and its chord. This right here Let's see if I got my highlighter. See it? That's a segment of a circle. An area of a segment, if you look at that picture right below the definition you just wrote down, that's like a great explanation. Area of a segment is equal to the area of the sector minus area of the triangle, right? And they put this triangle in here. Right there. So the area of a segment or area of segment equals area of sector minus area of triangle.
So let's say you were trying to find the area of the yellow and you're given this radius as 12 and this angle as 89 degrees. Right? So the area of the segment would be equal to the area of this sector. You would find the area of this whole piece, the yellow and the triangle combined, right? Because that's a sector. So that would be pi times 12 squared times 89 over 360, right? And then you would subtract from all of that area of the triangle. So look at this triangle. Let's see. Let's see. What's its height going to be? How are you going to find the height of that triangle? No, it's not. I mean, I shouldn't have made this a... Uh, yeah, but it's not. That's not a 90 degree angle. You know what I mean? So it looks like they're going to be giving you easier triangles to work with. So let's get let's make this a let's get rid of that. All right. And make it 90. So now if that is 90, then this other radius would be the height, wouldn't it? Because remember, the base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other. All right? So the area of the triangle would be 0.5 times the base, which is 12, times the height of that triangle, which is also 12. <coughs> so that's just a, n a matter of typing it into the calculator, isn't it? So the area of that sector is, let's go with, to the nearest hundredth. So pi times 12x squared times 89 fraction button 360 equals. Oh, yeah, now it's 90. Nice call. 90 over the 360. So anybody do that? What would you get for that? A little louder? 41.09. 41.09. Now, just while that number is sitting in your calculator, don't round it yet. Okay? You, is it more decimals? Yeah, it's 49. Okay. So just leave that sitting in there, right? And you can type minus 0.5 times 12 times 12. That was that was the like I said, what's the, the last answer? <laughs> 41.097? Yeah. So it's 41.10, right? Yeah. All right, so 41.10. Questions? I guess the only, it looks like it can get confusing when... Look at that example three, where your circle looks like this. And now this angle is 60 degrees. All right, this radius is 12 and you're finding the area of this region. So the area of the region would be equal to its pi times 12 squared again, right? Mm -hmm. Pi r squared times 60 over 360? Yeah. 
And then you're going to have to subtract 0.5 times the base times the height. Now look at this triangle. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do they tell you about it? That's the only angle that they give you is this 60 degree angle. So you've got to take this triangle. I'm going to redraw, I don't know, I'm going to redraw the triangle bigger. Does that help any? Let's see here. Do you see that this is the portion of the, what you need is this? Or? You got a big triangle there, then two of the sides are 12, right? And this angle is 60. So it's an isosceles triangle. Is it a 30, 60, 90? Well, if that's 60 and these two are 12, these two have to be equal to each other and add up to 120, right? So it is, isn't it? OK. Does everybody see that? That this triangle over here um, this angle is going to be 60 and this angle is going to be 60. So what are each of these up top? They're 30, right? So if all the angles are the same and all the sides are the same, then this piece is also 12, right? So if that piece is 12, then you've got this 30, 60, 90, and this portion of it is 6, right? Yeah. So 6 radical 3? Yeah. 6 radical 3 would be the height of that triangle. 6 squared of 3. And what would be the base? The 12, right. So 0.5 times the base, which is 12, times the height, which is 6 radical 3. There's all your dimensions to find the area of that little piece there, that segment of the circle. So if somebody wants to type all that in their calculator, if you didn't already do it, let me know what you get. See if we can get a common number. What about 13.04? 13.04? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Make sure you got 13.04 in your calculator. If you didn't, let's find out what you're doing or not doing. So yes, sir. When you count the base and the height on the other triangle, how come you just um, took the 12? How come you couldn't just took the 12 over here? Because you've got this if I break away this triangle and put it over here, okay? We've got a triangle with a 60 degree angle here. This piece is 12, this piece is 12. If we use one of these 12s as the base, you need the height of the triangle, which in this case, it would have been like that, right? So, if these two sides of the triangle are 12, then the triangle is isosceles. And if one angle is 60, then the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent to each other. So, that means that it's an equilateral triangle. So, you could have split any of these 60s in half to find the height. We just, since this angle right here was 60 degrees, we couldn't use 12 as a base and 12 as a height because oh, okay. they're not perpendicular to each other. Right. You needed a segment that's perpendicular to one of the sides, but it ends at a vertex. So oh. um, <clears throat> only when it's 90 can you use them both. Use, okay. Correct. Correct. You can use one as the base and one as the height. As soon as that angle starts to change, then hopefully they're just going to keep it at 60s 
So you yeah, sixty. Then there's a forty-five. Um, yeah, the nineties make it pretty easy. All right, so let me give you some practice to do today. Um, page eight thirteen. Two through eight. And uh, check headline for homework. 